Okay, so in this presentation I'm going to show you how we can investigate uh, the Elgamo public key encryption method which has some interesting uh, attributes such as the opportunity to do homomorphic encryption and rekeying and how we can scale this into an elliptic curve a cryptography method. Okay, so let's Let's make a start and see if we can uh, just provide a quick overview of what public key encryption actually is. Okay, so we start off with Bob and Alice. Bob, Alice. So Alice generates a private key. We'll call that private and also a public key. When Bob wants to send Alice a, a secret a message, then uh, Alice sends over her public key to Bob. Bob takes the message and then encrypts with the public key. Sends it over and the private key will then decrypt. There's another thing that happens with public key encryption is that uh, Bob can actually add a signature with his own private key. So he takes a hash of the message and then he encrypts this part with his private key. Then when the message comes over, uh, he sends his public key to Alice or she already has it on her key ring. She can decrypt uh, the uh, hashed, encrypted hash message and she will have proved that Bob actually has the correct private key uh, so that he has proven his identity. Okay, but in this case, what we'll do is we'll look at the public and the private key here and see how they're used uh, together. So with elliptic curve cryptography, uh, what we have is a, is a curve and then we take a point on the curve, such as G, and then we add the point to G plus G, and then we add the point again, G plus G plus G. So we end up adding the point, and each time we add the point, we'll always get a point on the elliptic curve. We represent this as N times G. So N is the number of times in which we add the point to G. And this becomes our private key. So the value of N here is our private key and NG becomes our public key. And that's the way that elliptic curve cryptography works. When we know the public key value, it's not, and even though we know the point here, the base point, we cannot determine the value of N. So the two most common uh, types of uh, public key encryption that we see are RSA and elliptic curve uh, crypt cryptography. So with RSA, we take two prime numbers and we multiply them together to give a modulus, which is N, and the difficulty becomes the factorization of N back into P and Q. The elliptic curve method is as we have uh, here. But it's not EC, elliptic curve cryptography is typically used for signing and not so much for the encryption process. So we'll have a look at the third method, which is L gamma. So this one here uses elliptic curves. This one here uses uh, the factorization of uh, prime numbers. And this one here uses discrete logarithms. With discrete logarithms, what we have is something like g to the power of x, and we typically define this in a finite field, and we take the mod of a prime number. And it's not possible, even though we know g and p, to determine the value of x if p is a large enough value, and also if x is a large enough value. So the traditional form of El Gamo is this, where we have a, a Bob has a secret, a private key here. 
and then he takes a G value. Typically G is two or three or something like that. We pick G, we can't just take any uh, value it's selected uh, carefully. And then we take P, the prime number here, so that both Bob and Alice will know the value of G and P, but only Bob will know the value of, of X. Bob's public key becomes Y, G, and P. And he sends that to Alice. Alice then takes the message and she works out an A and a B value. A is just G to the power of a random value that she creates, K mod P. And then he takes the Y value, raises it to this new value of K, and then multiplies by the message. The message is converted into a number an integer and they are multiplied together then we take mod p so a and b are the encrypted values then to decrypt uh, uh, bob takes the value of b divides it by a to the power of the private key x and then takes mod p and we should get the message back again so you can go through the basic proof for this, but it should work out that we end up cancelling things out and we get the value of M back. So this is a generating P here. There is the value of X, which is the random number. And there is Y, which is G to the power of X, mod P. We uh, Alice takes a random value between 0 and P, works out A and B. So there's Y to the power of K mod p times the message and again we do mod p at the end the message becomes uh, this b value times the inverse of a to the power of x mod p and it should all work okay so this is the original paper here that was published in 1985 and it's still relevant today but there is a better way to produce this rather than discrete logarithms and that's with elliptic curve cryptography. Okay, so here, here is the, um, the solution. So as with our normal elliptic curve cryptography, uh, Alice creates her private key of A. A is a scalar value. Uh, typically it's 256 bits here and a random number. Then we take a point on the elliptic curve, P, and we calculate her uh, public key as uh, A times this point P. So this is a point on the elliptic curve that we get and it becomes our public key. So she sends that over as A and we take our message. Bob takes a random number of K and then produces a new value of K, which is the point times this random value creates the K value. It then creates, it takes K, it's just created and multiplies it by A, the point here and then takes M, which is the message, and we apply that onto the elliptic curve. So we have two values, K and C. So they get sent back. Uh, Alice recalc now calculates. Uh, the, she takes the value of K here and multiplies it with our private key, A, to get S. And then the message is just the C value minus S, and you can recover it back. So this is the basic proof here, and it should all uh, work out. Uh, basically what's happening here is that uh, only by knowing the, the A value in here can we recover a value that's the same as that one. Okay, so this is the code. So we're taking the A value here, we're then working out the public key point on the elliptic curve by taking the base point and then uh, multiplying it by A. 
Next, we take uh, the message. Bob takes the message, and then that message is then applied as a point on the elliptic curve. We then create a random value k. Calculate big K here by taking uh, our point and multiplying it by K. We then calculate uh, the S value that gets sent over to Alice. We calculate the S value, which is A times K, our public key down there. And then we we will add sorry this is this point this is this part here so we take k times a k times a which is alex's public key so a value and then we'll add them together to give k a plus m so the k, the c here and the k here get sent over to alice now alice will calculate the s value here, which is a times k, our private t times k, then take the message, which is just c minus uh, s as a point, and you should have the uh, the point on the elliptic curve that the data represents, and she pulls that back with the uh, the data method. So here's an example here of of our of our code. As a result, there's a private key, public key, there's the message point, key and C value, and then we get that uh, back. So let's have a look at this. So here we are here, we'll take our message. Okay, so that's the private key, A value, that's the public key, that's the B value. Typically, we only use the x point rather than the x, y point. There's the message point and the elliptic curve. There's the k and the c value, and then there's the output there. Okay, so the code that we're using is this code that we saw so, uh, there. Okay, so that's been an introduction as to how we can use Elgamal encryption for public key, but apply it with uh, elliptic curve cryptography. So now we have a method that uh, Alice can send over her public key. We send over the values of k and c, which has a random number k in it, so it's not possible to uh, decode, uh, decrypt this. Alice uses her private key, and she's able to, uh, uh, to decrypt the encrypted message.